Matthew chapter 15. I ask you to please pray for us. Pray for me. I need prayer. Then came to Jesus the scribes, those are the people in charge of the scriptures. The Pharisees, they're the religious group, they believe in angels' resurrection, which were in Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, the state is here not to wash your hands or not to wash your hands. It's proper hygiene to wash your hands. But this was a tradition set forth as a religious law. Not God's law. A religious law of man. To wash your hands. Why they did it? It can't be found in the scriptures. The only washing you find in the scriptures is the priest with the brazen labor. Not the people. So how far this tradition went, but evidently, you know, they are in an open place where the Pharisees and scribes are watching. And they're so mind-boggled for the very little doodle. Remember the last time they got all upset, they're walking through the cornfields, wheat fields, and the disciples were taking the wheat and rubbing it in the hands, and you're violating the, the Sabbath. And I don't know if that's really actual work, but compared to the man picking up sticks, okay, maybe it is. But you can't find this washing of hands. And I know for some households, some mothers, grandmothers, it's a law. And you, you, you come out of the bathroom and they, okay, let me see your hands. Let me see if they're wet. But he, Jesus, answered, said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God your, by your traditions? All right, you have traditions. And you transgress, which is a violation, which is a sin, the commandment of God. And later on, we're going to find that, that Jesus will say to a point, not completely quoting the scripture, probably, but he's going to say, listen, your, trans, uh, your, trans, yeah, your traditions violate the word of God. There's the word of God, and over here is the tradition. They're not the same. And that's the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church will, will excuse their sins of what the Bible says because it's the tradition of the church. We There's no pope in the Bible but tradition. For God commanded saying he's going to run to the law. Honor thy father and mother. That's one of the big ten commandments. He that curses his father or mother, let him die to death. There was a death penalty for anything misappropriating, mishandling, misdoings against your parents. They would be brought forth and they could be stoned to death. Gee, that would get rid of ch child delinquency. That would get rid of child violence. That would get rid of children shooting each other. But ye say, all right, so God's commandment is honor thy father and mother. Now, the tradition, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mayest profit by me. So what it is, is, all right, the children are take care of the father. The mother and the parents to take care of the father, the mother, or the children, whoever needs to care. And the law is you're to honor, you're to respect, you're to give to your parents as needed, and the parents are to give to the children as needed. And so, what, what the tradition is if you will take what you're supposed to give to your parents, come to us and say it's a gift. 
we will allow this sin and probably a percentage of whatever it is we will excuse you from the big ten of the law the big ten commandments so in other words if you which not applied to the church but if you were to walk up to a pastor or a priest in a church and let's say you had a thousand dollars that would help your mom or dad that, that's an even number well instead is you take that thousand dollars you give it to the priest or pastor or whoever you say hold this for me and they would probably say okay we'll do it for a percentage whatever it is so you would be able to say well I, I can't give you the money mom I can't give you the money dad I've given it to the church I've given it to the temple I've given it to the rabbis I've given it to the master I've given it to the pastor I've given it to whatever then later on when things are cooled down you get what you gave to the religion shall I say and they will give you a percentage back keeping a percent and then under the law of the Pharisees they will give you a permission slip for God that wouldn't do you any good that you could not give to your parents because you've given it to the religious facility Now, I don't know if there's anything like that in the Catholic Church. I'd never heard of that. It could be. I don't know if that's ever practiced today. I don't know what it's, what it's called. Whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So in other words, you tell your parents, okay, I know your mom, you, you need medicine, expensive. <coughs> well, I don't know what you're going to do with me. All my money is in the church and... I, I'm giving it all. I gave it as a gift to a church, my money. Sorry. And later on, you get the gift back. <laughs> and honor not his father or his mother. You lied to your parents. You set forth a condition to deceive them. Using religion. I'm using religion very freely. He shall be free. Okay, you don't you don't have to take care of your parents no more. We'll we took care of it. No. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect in your traditions. There is no honor thy father and mother if you can get a sidetrack of religion. Because most likely, if whatever I'm going to say, money. If you give the money to your parents, you're not going to see it back. Most likely. Well, if you give it to the priest and the gift to the priests, rabbis, pastors, whatever, religion, whatever you give, deacon, whatever, the bank. Well, you, your chances are you're going to get it back. Not all of it, but you're going to get a good lump sum back. Ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah, he says, that's Isaiah in Greek. You learn Greek today. Isaiah, Hebrew, E in the Greek, I in the Hebrew, prophesied of you. So mark down what we've seen already. In the prophets, the prophets are speaking of the religious people of Jesus' time and other times. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. You know, they got lip service. They got mouth service. They can say hallelujah. They can say amen. They can say Jesus. They can say Bible. They can say King James. They can say anything religious. To them, it is religious to say what they're saying. They honor me with their lips. A lot of people of the charismatic movements and the Catholic and oh Jesus, praise the Lord Jesus, 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Sweet Lord Jesus. My sweet Jesus. But their heart is far from me. See, it's never a head religion. It's your heart. What's the motive? As far as the heart is from the mouth, there's no realness. A lot of religion today, a lot of the churches today, it's just words. And it's not real. One thing we call easy believing is you say a prayer and somebody will tell you, a pastor or a deacon or somebody will say, well, you're saved. No, it was just mouth. It was lips. But Paul says in Romans 10, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, you can say all the prayers you want, you can lip all the things that you can lip, if it's not of the heart. That's why you can say for some people, okay, they said a prayer. Uh, there's no salvation. They didn't do it heart. When your heart leaves God, or if your heart was never with God, you're in trouble. But in vain do they worship me. And there's that's a lot of religions. Any denomination. Anything they do. If it's not in of the heart. In other words, it is specifically for Jesus. No man worship. No man grabs the gate. You get up, and if you sing the most beautiful song, and you're doing it for Jesus because Jesus gave you a beautiful voice, glory to God. I don't care if they applaud. I don't care if the pastor you know, praises my name. I'm doing it for Jesus. As much as the person who can't sing, off-key, terrible, plug your ears, they get up and they sing for Jesus, for Jesus, only for Jesus. And no matter what people think, no matter what people say, I got up and I sang for Jesus. And Jesus alone. That's heart. You get up there and you play that piano, and you do the piano, you know, uh, sympathy and uh, of a chorus and all that, and how great it is, and people clap, and you love the people clapping the pastor, how beautiful, how great it is, and, and you do it for that kind of, that's not art. Did you do it for Jesus? Or did you do it for yourself? And if it's done for yourself, there's no heart in it. If you've done it for Jesus, there's the heart. Not that... Uh, where was I? But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The Pharisees and religion has doctrines and things, commandments of men to do. They are outside God. They are outside the Word of God. The, the, the Mass. You're going to literally eat the body and blood of Jesus. That's not in the Bible. Well, you can say, well, John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, you'll see it's not correct to do what you do. And there's, you know, if you're not of our church, and that's the Baptist Brighters, that's the Catholic, and then that's the, uh, uh, the Mormons. If you're not of our church, you can't, you know, you're not wearing a three-piece suit, whatever it is. You didn't give to the nickel, dime, penny. When you have an extra curriculum means of worship, the doctor, God says that's me. 
And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles the mouth. And the, the, the issue is, they've been eating bread with unwashed hands. Okay? That does not defile a man. If a proper man under the law did what the law told him to do, and he goes to sit down and has, has a sandwich, or has bread, and he has unclean hands, and let's say he's shot or he's killed, holding the bread with unclean hands, he's not going to go <coughs> to hell because his hands are unwashed. I would assume Sansom's hands were not washed when he's holding those pillars. I know he wasn't eating bread, but... And then there are religions. They have, there are some religions, oh, you can only eat uh, vegetate, veg vegetables. You know, so, uh, no, no gluten. You can't have meat on Friday. you got to hold this wafer so long in your mouth. And you can't leave the church until you the wafer after so many months. You know, you can have a cigarette in your mouth and be saved and please God. Cigarette sin and ain't going to cast you in hell. You may lose some rewards. You may not be pleasing God. Now, I'm not go out and smoke a cigarette. I'm just saying. You get somebody like me, I've battled years and years and years of, of smoking cigarettes. Finally, God gave me the, 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 the mode of putting it away. God. Only God could have got rid of the cigarette, how God got rid of the cigarette. All those years that I smoked cigarettes, being saved and serving the Lord, you're going to tell me I've been condemned to hell because of it? You're going to say that God wasn't right with me? I'm pretty sure during that time that when I when I fought the cigarette, I didn't want the cigarette. I knew it, it, it blessed me God. I knew God wasn't happy. I knew God was pleased those times. And as with people who who have intoxicated liquor. You know, that's a battle. That's a that's a struggle. You can't condemn them. If they're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the gospel and death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, they're just as much as saved as you are. But which cometh out of the mouth, that defiles a man. And we're going to see the list in a moment. Don't knock the man that's smoking cigarettes. Don't mock the man that, that has alcohol. Now, I'm, I'm not saying do it. I'm saying quit it. Stop it. But there are far more sins that come out than go in. Then came the disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou the Pharisees were offended? Oh, oh no. That's the great sin today. You offended me. Pronouns offend me. Male or female, they offend me. Well, the Pharisees were offended. I would assume there were times that Paul got offended. Peter got offended. I get offended. And you just get on with your life. There are things that offend me. No, just. Oh, and they'll stop eventually. Maybe, hopefully. After they heard the saying. You know what you just said, Jesus? They were offended. Listen, many people are going to be offended at the word of God. When you're a street preacher, as I was, and you're knocking on doors, as I know Christians do, and, and you walk up to people and say, here, let me have a gospel check. You walk up to someone, here, let me have an open Bible with you. However you're witnessing through the word of God, Jesus Christ, people are going to get offensive. Including Christians. Well, that happens. But he answered and said, Now here, here's Jesus, they got offended. Every plant which my father, which my heavenly father has not planted, shall be rooted up. Now here, he's 
likened the men, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, to plants. Now, they're not plants walking around. They don't have leaves and flowers and fruit. There are some, some things in the Bible, they're an illustration. They're not to be taken literal. Like John chapter 6 with the body and blood. It's an illustration. He's given an illustration right now. As God planted, I mean, he just told them that the sower and the, and the seed. He just told you the tares and the wheat. He says, God planted seed. And you know what? If God didn't plant it, if, it, if it's not wheat, if it's tares, remind you a couple chapters back, well, the tares are going to be torn up, bundled up, and burnt up. That which is God's is going to be gathered and brought into the barn. That only backs up the parables he told before. I think it was 13, was it? Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. You know what he's saying? He said they can't see what they're doing. They can't see where they're going. They can't see anything. And they got a bunch of blind followers who can't see and don't know. And they're going to fall into a ditch. And the ditch would be, you know, they're not on the road no more. They're on the wayside. And the wayside, according to so is is where the, where the devil comes along. Then answered Peter and said to him, Declare unto us this parable. Jesus said, Are ye not without understanding? Now he's going to blast Peter. And today we will be like, you know, oh, you, you know, when you rebuke someone, that's not nice. That's, that's not what Jesus would do. Yes, it is. Jesus called out error and sin. And did not gloss over it, did not wax over it, didn't wax elegant. Hey, you sinned, you got it wrong. X. You don't get a C because you put your pencil to the paper. If it's an F, you're going to get an F. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world does. Peter got it wrong, and Jesus calls him out. That's what Christians are to do. We're not to gloss and wax elegant in a friendly manner, come up and pat you on the back and put, on, put an arm. No, listen, this is what, the, hey, excuse me, sir. Brother, you come here for a minute. You know, what you're doing here, chapter, here, book number, no, here, book Chapter number and verse. Now, I prayed over this. And I just want to help you. Now listen, I, 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 got, I got a beam and a molt in my eye. Sir, I, I, brother, I, I want to see you do right. This is what the Bible says. And you, you're not doing. And if they like it. Amen. You gained a, a friend. You gained a brother, the Bible said. If they don't, well, let them be a heretic. If people don't like my, my studies about uh, Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan, and I'm doing a study now about paganism, if you don't like it, hop off the wagon. But me and the wagon is going to go to Jesus. And I'm telling you, I don't like to be friendless, and I am friendless. Because of my stance of the Bible and, and my convictions. And the devil wants me to fold up and give in. I'm having a tough time with it. Do not ye understand that whatsoever enters in the mouth goes in the belly. Okay, yep, yeah, we know that. The esophagus goes down, boom, and it's cast out for draw. What's draw? There, the Bible just told you what draw it. It goes in your belly and comes out. What comes out of your <laughs> doo doo, caca, poopy? Number two. So when you see in the Bible a draw house, what is that? Doo doo, caca, poopoo. 
See, the Bible, it's its own self-interpreting dictionary. Now, sometimes you may have to go run over to, to Webster's 1828. You know, a lot of times when I run to Webster's 1828, it's a normal English word that I have to question, what does that really mean? And the hard, archaic words of the Bible, the Bible itself is self-interpreting. You just learned what a draught house is. Doo-doo, caca, sewer. Poopy. But those things which proceed out of the mouth, okay, Don't eat meat. Well, it's okay to eat meat. Now, if your stomach can't handle it. Now, there's some people, they can't eat pork. Well, though we have the freedom of pork. I eat pork, but there are some pork, and there's sometimes pork bothers my stomach. So the, the pork I can't eat, I don't eat. And the pork that I do eat, I'm very careful. But I can't say, well, the law says, you know, you don't, not to eat anything of the swine. We're not under the law. Now, if I was sitting with a Jewish person lost, I wouldn't order pork. I, if I sat at a dinner table and there was an unsaved Jewish person there, and he knew I was a Christian, I'd say, sir, I'm going to have a hamburger. Would a hamburger from this place will offend you in the kosher law that you follow. Would that offend you? I, I heard a Christian one time, oh, I want to do it. I just ordered a pork. You're a fool. You got to think about it. You don't want to offend that guy because you might be able to witness to that guy. You might be able to turn that guy over to Jesus Christ. If you offend him over because you ordered pork ribs or pulled pork sandwich and he's angry with you, well, guess what? Paul says our diet is not to make others stumble, especially Christians. Now, if you got a Christian who believes in, I show him the scriptures, and if he's a vegetarian and all that, I show him what the scriptures say, and if he's still, okay, I order a salad. But what proceeds out of the mouth cometh forth from the heart. So here's from the heart. And they that defile a man. What? is of the heart that is wicked and defiles us. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. They don't come out of the head. Man, science, education, uh, uh, doctors have got it wrong. Psychiatrists have got it wrong. The books have got it wrong except for the Bible. If you're going to deal with somebody who's got a mental problem, it is not the head. It's the heart. Murders come from the heart. Adulteries come from the heart. Matthew 5, 28. Who saw her looking upon a woman and lust after her in his heart. Is already committed adultery with her. It's in the heart. Je uh, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitfully, deceitfully wicked. Thefts, false witness, blasphemy. So if you want to get down to the heart, down to the nitty gritty, down to hey, we're going to try to help these people, this person, you got to acknowledge what the Bible acknowledges: it's sin. And it comes from the heart. And it defiles you. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a... Unwashed hands is not a sin. Now you know some of those Pharisees and scribes had evil thoughts. That they want Jesus dead. They have murdered and they're going to murder Jesus. Adultery. They brought a woman caught in adultery in the very act. Which one? Fornications. Theft. 
Well, if they were taking money from a man that was, instead of giving it to his mother and father, that's a theft. False witness. He goes to his mom and dad and says, hey, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the money to give you. Blasphemies, we just read early a few chapters ago, they were saying that Jesus and the Holy Spirit was casting out devils by Beelzebub. Then Jesus went thence and departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He's over by the Mediterranean Sea now. 